Welcome to our lecture online. So here we have an example with rectangular coordinates that is again a little bit more difficult than the one we did in the previous video. In this case we're dealing with the paraboloid and the equation describing the surface of the paraboloid is y equals x squared plus z squared. Notice it's directed in towards the y direction, the y-axis, and it looks like it's circular in shape. It's not elliptical in shape. Also notice that if I draw a line along the edge of that surface in the xy plane, I have the relationship y, y equals x squared, which gives us that parabolic shape in the xy plane. Now the volume is going to be the triple integral of the dv, which is the triple integral of dz dx dy. And you'll see in just a moment why I've interchanged the dx and the dy. Because what we're going to do is we're going to first integrate in the z direction, and notice that if I start from the y-axis on up, or at least from the xy plane on up, notice depending upon where I'm at, the height of that surface will depend upon what the value of x and y are, so my limits are going to depend on y and x. So my limits here are going to be written as follows. I can say that the volume is going to be equal to the triple integral, like this, and the z limits are going to start from 0 to the upper limit, which is the square root of y, y minus x squared. But if I go from 0 to that, that means I'm ignoring the bottom half. I simply have to double that because the symmetry, and I could put a 2 in front. So that will be the integral over dz. Now in the x direction, notice depending upon where I'm at, in the y direction, here x will be very small, here x will be bigger, so x will depend upon the square root of y. So when I integrate over x, my limits are going to go from 0 all the way to, let's see, that's going to be the square root of y. And again, if I go from 0 to the square root of y, I only do half of the paraboloid, so I need to multiply this times 2 again, or times 4, because I'm only taking the top half and I'm only taking the front half, so I'm only taking a quarter of the volume of the paraboloid, so I have to multiply that times 4. And then finally, in the y direction, I can now go all the way from 0 to the end, which is 4. So from 0 to 4, those will be constant uh, limits of integration. So I have dz, dx, and dy. And that's why I did the x before the y, so to compensate for that. So now you can see that both the limits for z and the limits for x are functions. In this case, this is a function of y and x. In this case, that's a function of y. So then at the end, when I integrate the third integral, I will only have the variable y in my integral. So now I can go ahead and start integrating the first integral. So I'm going to integrate dz. And so that gives me v is equal to 4 times the double integral over x and over, oh, wait a minute, this should be y equal, so over y and x, so I'll make that clear, over y and x, but the integral of dz is z, and my limits of integration are going to go from 0 to the square root of y minus x squared, and I still will have my dx and my dy. All right, so coming up here, that means my volume is going to be equal to 4 times the double integral over y and x. And then here when I plug in the upper limit, I get y minus x squared, the square root thereof. The lower limit is 0. So I end up with the square root, the square root of y minus x squared times dy times dx. And actually I want the dx first. So let me go ahead and write the dx first because I want to integrate over x first and over y. So dx dy like this. All right. Notice my limits for x is going to go from 0 to the square root of y and y and then for my y limit y limit is going to go from 0 to 4. Okay, now integrating this, notice that y is going to be held constant. x is my variable because I'm integrating over the x. So that means that this is the same format, but instead of y, instead of a squared, I have a y. So a is essentially the square root of y there. That means my integral is going to look as follows. So v is going to be equal to 4 times the double integral, no, the single integral now. We have the single integral left, y equals 0 to 4 because when we integrate this, we end up with this expression right here. So this will be equal to x times 
y minus x squared to the one half power divided by two plus a squared. Now remember, a squared is represented by y, so I get y over two times the inverse sine of x over a. a is going to be the square root of y, like this, and this whole thing is now going to be times, uh, we're going to, well, what are the limits of integration? They're from 0 to the square root of y, 0 to the square root of y times dy. So that means when I plug in the limits of integration in the upper limit, I'm going to replace every x by the square root of y, and then again by 0. That means that v is equal to 4 times the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 4, Okay, when I plug in the square root of y in for x, I end up with y minus y, which is 0. So I end up with a 0. When I plug in the square root of y here, I get the square root of y over the square root of y. That is 1. The inverse, of, the inverse sine of 1 is pi over 2. And so and then I have this. Um, so I have plus y over 2 times pi over 2. When I plug in the lower limit, I get 0, so minus 0. When I plug in the lower, lower limit here, the inverse sine of 0 is also 0, so minus 0, and the whole thing times dy. All right, so now what I can do is I can bring the pi out and the 4 out, so that will cancel, so I end up with v is equal to pi times the integral from y equals 0 to 4 of y dy which is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 4. Well, actually, I'm going to take the integral now, so I don't need that anymore. So let me get rid of this. I'm now going to integrate y dy, so I end up with y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 4. Okay, and so that means that I get pi times 4 squared divided by 2 minus 0, because when I plug in the lower limit, I get 0. And so finally, I have the volume is equal to 16 divided by 2, or 8 pi. And notice that is exactly half of what we got in the previous video. In the previous video, we had a cylinder of length 4. And so that means that the volume of this paraboloid is half the volume of the sim cylinder that it would encapsulate and that seems to be reasonably close to what you would expect to find so i'd say 8 pi is probably either the exact answer or close to the answer and that is how it's done